Okay. It's always fun doing a live show. Wait a couple minutes for people to show up so that way we've got an audience. As you guys know, some of the best things that you can do during an online class or stream is to participate. And the best way to participate is to comment in the comment section. So if you're joining us on Facebook, make sure to check in, tell us where you're coming from, where you're, you know, where, what, what market you're in, your name and where you're coming from, as we're always looking for agent to agent referrals. If you're joining us from YouTube, same thing. So that's one of the best things that you can do to help this class. Cause as you guys know, I'm just sitting here staring at my slides, staring at myself and I wish, 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 wish I could see you guys. So I love it when you guys check in. I promise today you will walk away from this class with a clearer understanding of what you should be tracking on a weekly cadence to help you reach your goals. And the reason that this matters is because there's a lot of distractions in real estate, right? There's a lot of distractions in life. And if we can make sure to narrow our focus on the things that are going to make the biggest difference, the likelihood of us reaching our goals is going to increase. So recently at the Tom Ferry Success Summit, it was really funny because I was sitting down, I wasn't looking up, but I was just listening to Tom and he was talking and all of a sudden he said something and I look up and he had a huge, you know, screen of my scorecard. And it's a scorecard that I created with some other coaches and my awesome operations manager and transaction coordinator, Kelsey and Ricky, they kind of engineered it to be able to use from the book Traction. And of course, Tom says from the stage, he says, and make sure you ask your coach about this. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I immediately posted, hey, if you want a copy of it, let me know. This goes over best in a coaching call. And so I thought, what better way to be able to do this than to come onto the Resilient Realtor platform and to do a semi-coaching call and give you some background on why it's important to have a, an effective scorecard or a scoreboard. So let's jump into our topic today. And I wanna give you guys a little bit of background. So the principles of the scorecard or the scoreboard, it comes from traction and the four disciplines of execution or what we also call 4DX. So there are three books that I really, really like that talk about this. So the first one's traction. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, when, when traction first came across, and I think it was probably three years ago is when I first tried to read the book. <laughs> and I say tried because, it is so dry. It is a very, very dry book, but it is powerful and it's important. So if you're high expressive like me, I promise you just like take your time, stick with it, maybe even put together a book group. That's probably one of the easiest ways to do it. But um, since then I've read Traction three times and every time I go in, in fact, it's sitting right back here, it's highlighted, there are notes in it. I refer to it almost weekly uh, with my coaching clients and with the own, my own team. Uh, if you're going to listen to it on Audible, I highly recommend that you do get a paper copy because this book is one that you're gonna wanna take notes in. The other book, which is one of my all time favorites and I've been referring to it for over nine years is called The Four Disciplines of Execution or 4DX. Four Disciplines of Execution is not as dry as Traction. It's a little bit of a lighter, easier read, but it is still very, very strategic. Both of these books are an operating manual on how to run your business, how to set goals, and how to be successful. I did want to also briefly mention another book that I read a couple years ago called Measure What Matters. This one is definitely technical and, and geared more towards, I even say, tech companies. It's a lot from Google. They focus on OKRs, right? So oh, where's my cowboy hat? I really should put it on. I agree. Someone just asked, uh, hello from Texas, where's your cowboy hat? So Traction is going to focus on rocks and goals, and the four disciplines of execution is going to focus on wigs, which we're going to go in. I'm going to combine both of them so that we can take the best, the best of both books and use it in our business. So let's talk a little bit about the scorecard in the book Traction. So 
Traction is about creating an entrepreneurial operating system. And the scorecard is to measure the weekly performance of the company. They want you to be able to see how you're performing. It consists of your KPIs, key performance indicators, the responsibilities, and who is responsible for what inside the business. And then it has the goals and the actuals. So it's something to keep in front of you on a weekly cadence. And the reason for that is it wants to help you drive data decisions, right? So data-driven decision-making. And that's why they use a scorecard. It also provides you a quick snapshot of the health of the company, but also how likely are you to hit your goals? right and remember when we're in the book traction we're going to talk a lot about rocks and what that's referring to is goals so just know in traction we're focused on rocks we're making data different data driven decisions and the scorecard is only one small chapter of the entire entrepreneurial operating system or the framework also known as eos now in four disciplines of execution or 40x they focus on wigs wildly important goals. So that is just some of the terminology. I'll kind of go back and forth between the two of them. And then you can just decide what you want to call it within your own framework. But the the purpose of the scorecard or the scoreboard, in fact, they call it a scoreboard in 40X, is that they want you to track the team's progress. They want to up and visual, no escaping where we're at in relation to the goals. It provides real-time feedback so that you can make course correction. And that's truly the purpose of both a scorecard or a scoreboard is that if you wait too long to make a course correction, right, you'll be really far off. So they want you to have these really important rocks or goals or wigs in front of you every single week so that you can make decisions to move your business. I'm gonna take you through how and what you could be measuring and what it would look like. I'm gonna give you guys some real life examples of what it looks like in some of the systems and tools that are out there. So here's the benefit of combining both the philosophy of Traction and 40X. They both have a common framework. The focus is accountability and data-driven decision-making. Both of them have something that's up and visual so that you can track your business, right? Both of them are aligned with your overarching goal and where you're going. It's so that you can course correct quickly, right? Also, so you just can't hide or someone in your in your organization can't hide. It becomes very, very, you know, noticeable if someone's not hitting what they're supposed to be hitting. And if our goal is going to be attained, right? So those are, you know, those are some of those things that uh, by combining both of them, you're going to see the benefit to that. So let's talk about where we start. It starts with creating your goal or creating your wig or, or your rock where you're going to focus. The premise of this, and there are chapters devoted to this, so I'm just giving you just the tiniest brief, you know, snapshot in here is it should be specific and measurable with a clear deadline. Right. So if you are creating a wildly important goal, how much by when? Right. So we've all heard of smart goals. That's really what you can think of as this is a smart goal. How much by when? And whether you call it a wig or you call it a rock, it is a goal that you are going after. And in both books, we talk about short term goals and long term goals. The focus that I have in the scorecard that we use are our quarterly goals and our quarterly goals come from our yearly goals, which then feed into our five year and 10 year goals. So we're just kind of backward mapping where we want to be in the future and then piecing it back to what do we need to do in the next 90 days. The other big piece of creating these scorecards or scoreboards is that you need to act on the lead measure. So inside the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution, they talk a lot about lead measures and lag measures. The lag measures are going to be the end result. So that's going to be your volume, your GCI, your closed units. The lead measures are the activities that are within your control to be able to influence whether you're going to hit the goal or not. And the scorecard should reflect both lag measures and lead measures so that we can act on the lead measures. Are we doing enough? So in real estate, the easiest way to think about this is to start at the 
the lag measure or the end result. We get a paycheck, right? What happens before we get a paycheck? Well, that means that we're under contract. To be able to get under contract, what's the next thing that comes before that? Well, we need to write offers. In order to be able to write offers, what comes before that? We need to be going on appointments, whether it's a showing appointment or a listing appointment. And to be able to go on an appointment, we need to have conversations. In order to have conversations, we need to dial. In order to dial, we need to prospect. So you can kind of track that all the way back and those are your lead measures. How many conversations am I having? How many appointments am I having? How many hours am I prospecting? All of those would be consider considered lead measures. And those are the things that you can directly influence. When you start to see patterns in your business, so let's say that you're not getting enough contracts right? You can go back to a lead measure. Well, are we setting enough appointments? Maybe we're going on the appointments, but we're not converting. Well, now we know where the hiccup is and what we need to focus on. Maybe we are going on the appointments, um, or maybe we're setting the appointments, but they're not showing up. Maybe we're not setting enough appointments. We'll then go back. Are we talking to enough people? If we're talking to enough people and we're setting enough appointments, then we know where the conversion problem is. So these lead measures really help you course correct. And again, they are the pieces that you can influence on the goal. If you're only looking at, and I'll kind of you know switch gears and, and take this into a nutrition aspect. If you're only looking at pounds lost, right? You're leaving a lot up for guesswork. You have to go back and say, okay, what did I eat this week? How many steps did I get? How much water did I drink? What did my macros look like? All of those items would be considered your lead measures and your lag measures would be pounds lost on the scale. It's really important to find the right lead measures. Now, if you've never done this, it's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering, right? You need to figure out what should I focus on? And I'll tell you that our scorecard has had a couple different iterations to make sure that we are focusing on the things that influence our goals the most. And this is where a coach or a mastermind really come in handy. So as you are setting up your scorecard or your scoreboard, you might want to show it to someone and say, hey, does this look right? Does this, does this have the correct activities that are going to help me achieve my goals? The next piece, after we act on the lead measures, we're going to keep a compelling scoreboard or scorecard. This becomes really important. You want to see your progress. You don't want to hide. You don't want it to be too late before you really are able to see where I am at in relationship to my goal. There's a lot of psychology that goes into that as well to be able to see the progress that you're making, but it also comes down to up and visual, in front of you, don't let it hide. And there is, a, you know, depending on your organization, there may be an opportunity for some competition or just that extra drive. I know when I can see, you know, how many, um, how many days in a row that I've tracked my food on my fitness pal, it's like, I don't want to miss a day. I've, I've got over a year of tracking my meals every single day. And I see that streak, right? That's part of my scorecard or my scoreboard for my fitness. I see this, I see the streak of tracking food. I see the streak of consistent work out. Having something up and visual like that in your business, you can see, and we've all seen Coach Jason Ferris, he's got a phenomenal um, Facebook post of his appointment goal, and you see he wrote down how many appointments he wanted to go and how he crossed off each one. That's part of his scoreboard or his scorecard on his goal for appointments. So you do want to think about where this is going to be. You want it up, you want it visual, and you want it easy to read. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And um, I'm going to show you some different programs, but it could also be as simple as just on your whiteboard on a big, huge post-it. You don't have to overcomplicate it because as you guys all know, you know, complexity is the enemy to execution. So your scorecard or scoreboard should be easy, but up visual and just like only the things that you need to understand. Before we go into scorecard making though, let's talk a little bit about their philosophy on setting goals or identifying rocks or wigs, right? Because it's all the same terminology. In all three books, they suggest that you do not have more than three goals. By having more than three goals, the likelihood is that you're just not going to achieve any of them. So by narrowing your focus, you're able to increase your odds of achieving your goals. Tom suggests a couple, a couple ideas around goal setting. You should have one around your business results 
think the lag measures, how much volume, how much transaction, what's my closed GCI, and of course, my profit after taxes. That could be one area of your goals. The second area of your goals is probably around your marketing and getting attention. How do we scale trust? How many followers? What's our referrals that we're getting inbound and outbound? What are the business opportunities that we generated? How many leads are we generating, right? There's a lot of different ways. So one of the things that we track is reviews, right? And we have a goal around reviews and we know how many reviews we need to get each month or each week to be able to hit our goal. And that's scaled backwards based on our transactional goal. The third area of goal setting, or you might be thinking this is something that I should put into my goals, would be around your appointments, right? Around your buyer consultations, your listing consultations, your listing appointments, something that you know is going to absolutely influence your production. When we're talking about real estate goals, here are three things to consider as goals to put inside of your, your big ones. So, here are a couple items I just broke down of what you might put in your weekly dashboard. Again, it's a scorecard. It's the same terminology. Some people call it a dashboard, but you might be looking at your revenue. You might be looking like your profit after taxes or just your gross commission income and your net commission income, looking at your volume, looking at your closed sales. What do we have pending? right? Sales, your active listings. You might even, depending on your market, if it's slowing down, you might even want to be tracking how many, you know, what's the days on market for our listings? Are we moving the inventory that we have? Definitely looking at your, um, your pipeline. That's a fantastic thing, like coming soon listings. How many listings do we have signed ready to come? How many buyers in our pipeline? So, you know, depending on your CRM, if you're using, uh, you know, uh, like Sierra Interactive, they have a prime section. Are you tracking how many prime leads you have? Or in Boomtown, it might be hot. How many hot leads do you have? Tracking your pipeline would be something that you're looking at every day. Is it expanding or contracting? Of course, appointments should definitely be in there. And then it's always a good idea to know your numbers on your conversion rate and making sure that you're really focusing on doing your best. What I don't have listed here is reviews. So this is where I said, Sometimes it can be difficult to identify what should I be tracking? You, you don't want 20 plus things on your scorecard because the purpose of the scorecard is that it is simple to see, are we on track? Are we behind? Are we likely to hit our goal? So you may have to adjust your scorecard and take some things on or take some things off. As you gain consistency around tracking, you'll start to say, oh, this is this is helpful data and we can make decisions on this. And then, you know, this one, maybe we just look at this monthly. We don't need to look at it every single week. So let's talk about creating the scorecard. So the first thing you need to remember is that whatever is on your scorecard, needs to tie back to your rocks, your wigs, and your goals, right? All the same thing. It needs to tie back. So if it's a certain amount of volume or X amount of listing appointments or appointments in general, that's going to be the lead measure that we're tracking. Your scorecard should include lead measures and lag measures. You also want to identify who's going to collect the data. Now, if you're a solo agent, you're collecting all your own data. And we've all heard that if you don't have an assistant, you are your assistant. But if you do have a team, one of the things you want to identify is who's going to collect that data each week. And then who owns the data? So for instance, on my scorecard, a lot of the data is retrieved by our virtual assistant and by our operations manager and our transaction coordinator. I actually don't take and put any of the data into the scorecard. It's all there. But I do own parts of that including the sales team. As the team leader, I'm in charge of the production. So even though I'm not collecting the data and putting it inside the scorecard, I do own that data. Who owns reviews? Well, that's actually owned by our operations department and their name is there. So even though all the agents, team leaders, everybody on the team is trying to get reviews, whoever who owns that is one specific person. And by owning that, that means that they're pushing that initiative throughout the company. So it's important who collects the data and then who owns it. And then again, make it simple to understand. In 40X, they talk a lot about like, you should be able to at a glance know, are we winning, right? Are we in the green? Are we in the red? So you really want to simplify what your scoreboard looks like. If it's really hard to understand, you might want to just take some things out. Now, here's what I'll say. 
We use CTE, uh, Committed to Excellence, in our business. It's a phenomenal program. They're not paying me to say this. I just really do believe in the program. It's very inexpensive. I want to say it's like $35 a month. And it is uh, probably 100 plus pages of spreadsheets that you put the data in one time in one place and it feeds all these different graphs and charts. And sometimes, actually not sometimes, a lot of times clients get overwhelmed. They're like, it does so much. That's why even though on our company we use CTE, we still have a scorecard because it just has our like 13 things that let us know if we're winning or we're losing. And then if we want to go into um, lead source uh, profitability and you know all of that, all of that kind of stuff, we jump into CTE and we dig a little bit deeper. But for our weekly meeting, we are just using the scorecard. So it does need to be simple to understand. Um, Sisu is the same way. Sisu has some incredible dashboards. If you've ever used Sisu, um, they have some incredible dashboards. And at times, it can be complicated to understand. You don't have to create a, a scorecard or a scoreboard outside of wherever you're collecting your data like that. But if it is complicated and not easy to understand, this is where you might do something in a Google Sheet like we did. So here is an example of the scorecard. And what I'll do is I'll have Kelsey go ahead and drop the template for this inside the uh, Facebook, inside the Facebook group, uh, probably just in the chat or maybe even as a file, if you'll go ahead and drop the uh, template. And when I say that it's a template, please change this. You don't need to use it exactly as it is. But let's talk a little bit about what is inside this template. So the first thing is new listings taken. And you'll see that the first file says who reports it and then who owns it. This is really important because we have on our team, our cadence is every Monday we have this meeting. On some of the teams I coach, it's on Wednesdays and they call it their, you know, their weekly meeting on Wednesdays. This has to be updated before the WIG meeting right, or before the weekly meeting to make sure that we have all the relevant data. So the next piece is, what is the measurable piece? Remember, the measurables are going to tie back to your goal. In this case, we also have the weekly goal. So new listings taken is two. The goal is to take two listings a week. And you can see as you go across on the right, in this case, this example from a client was, um, they got it, you know, so there was zero, zero, two, it was green. The, the sheet's designed to light up green when you hit it. Uh, one, three, zero. So clearly in February, those two weeks, when they came to the meeting, one of the first things they'd say is, okay, we didn't take any listings. How many listing appointments did we go on, right? Oh, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see the listing appointment goal is five listing appointments a week. And not once in the example here did they meet that. In fact, it was only one, zero, one, one. So is it any wonder that they weren't hitting their goal consistently? We could see that we immediately have a problem with listing appointments set and met. Maybe it's a tracking issue. I know, uh, yeah, maybe chime in the chat. How many of you guys are 100% diligent at tracking your numbers and you know exactly how many appointments? Some of you will, and some of you really struggle with that. So collecting the data is not always easy. And they talk a lot about that in the books that even though it's not easy, these things matter. So we're not hitting the listing taken goal. We go back to the next step. Well, how many appointments did we set? How many listing appointments did we go on? So there's the first item. The next one is um, one person admitted, I know I struggle. We all do. It, it just becomes one of those things where it's a discipline. It's something that you really need to look at. Maybe you, you do it daily. Maybe you go back weekly and you look at it. Maybe you use your assistant to help you track. There's, you know, it, it is important. There's always a way to do it. So the next one that they're looking at is new buyers pending. So they have a goal for new buyers pending two each week. And then you can see they're pretty much hitting that three, five, two, three, three, zero, one. So they're doing well they're actually doing really well on the buyer side, they're struggling on the listing side. So this goes, this starts to go into how do we make adjustments? Um, buyers under contract, GCI goal, and listings under contract, GCI goal. So they have a GCI goal listed out by buyers and sellers. Your may just be lumped into one. What is that weekly number of gross commission income that you're looking? And they're tracking that every single week. It's no wonder that the buyer side is green and, you know, the listing side is 
not hitting that goal because they're not getting those listings signed and they're not going on the appointment. So we already can see just from this weekly snapshot, we can start to see some trends and we can start to identify maybe what some of the issues are going on here. Um, units closed, they wanna close four units a week and they're not hitting that. We got three, one, one, two, three, two, four. We can already start to identify we're not having enough closings go back to the appointments. Do we need to adjust the appointments goal? In this case, they're not tracking conversations. And that might be one of the items that should change on this weekly scorecard because they're not hitting their goals and we know they're not hitting enough appointments. Well, that goes back to having the conversations. And then if we still had to go back, we'd go back to how many hours are they prospecting? How many dials? All of that can be tracked depending on the technology that you're using. But you guys can see just in this in this brief example, by having just these, I don't know how much is it, one, two, three, four, five, like 13 items up in visual in front of them, they can make corrections every seven days, right? They can focus on, well, why didn't we set enough appointments? How many hours did we prospect? How many open houses did we do? And that's even something that's that might be on yours, right? If one of your lead pillars is open houses, you're probably going to be wanting to track how many open houses you executed and how many leads from the open houses or how many registrations you got from the open houses. This doesn't even include anything from marketing. This is just a lot around their sales and their income goals. Let's look at another example. Um, oh, so I, I want to point out the fact that these numbers tie back to their quarterly goals, which then feed into their yearly goals. So I'm not going to go over it on this training session, but from the book um, Traction, they talk about the Vision Traction Organizer. And this is the last page of the Vision Traction Organizer. And so this one year plan would be broken out into four quarters. And this is the quarters for, or the rocks for the quarters. And that's going to have the revenue, the profit. This number right here feeds into these numbers. So we're not just pulling numbers out of thin air. It all ties back to the overarching goals. Now, there's a, several of you guys still with me and let me know online. Are you guys following me? Is this like complete gibberish or are you guys with me? Chime in because I just want to make sure that if I'm overwhelming you guys, I know this is a lot of technical stuff. Let me know. But if you're with me, chime in. Okay. So here's an example. Good. Someone says I'm following you. I always know it's super hard uh, when I'm just out here and I don't know. I can't see your guys' eyes glazing over or the confused looks on your face. So you guys let me know. Um, so a couple things. If you are, you know, if you're just yourself, here's the great news is that you can create a solo agent, if you will, scorecard. This is an example of one of the scorecards that was created by um, an agent that I coach and they broke it down to daily, weekly, and monthly. And it's a very simple scorecard. They wanted 30 minutes of exercise, 30 minutes of personal development, their hour of power, which would be their prospecting, and then some sort of a nightly routine, SOI, friends and family. Then weekly, they wanted to role play, do some market research and update their CRM. Monthly, they wanted to do two open houses. And so this is another example of a very simple scorecard that you can use. And Mandy Pickerel in um, DFW, she is one of the clients that I coach that has had the greatest impact by using a scorecard. We've been really able to hone her in. And if you've ever read the 12-week year, we talk a lot about um, in the 12-week year, just focusing on the next 90 days. Every time she uses a scorecard, she goes up in her percentage and her performance. And one of the tenets of the 12 week year is you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get 100%. You just need to get over 80%. And we found that many times when she started, she was scoring in the 60s. And within a couple of weeks, she was scoring in the 80s and then consistently in the 90s. So it's okay to have a bad hour or a bad day. It's the consistency in the tracking, the measuring, and those lead measure activities that are going to lead to your success. So we also have um, templates of the individual agent scorecard and happy, happy to make sure that you guys all get samples of this. Don't feel like you got to create this from um, scratch. Now I will tell you that our amazing Kelsey, she has created some of this in Canva. And <laughs> 
she'll give you the template. So you just have to reach out and you can just reach out through um, Resilient Realtor right here in the thread or in a message. And we'll make sure Kelsey gets you guys the templates in Canva. So if you guys want to use those, you can do it in Canva. I will tell you that my personal scorecard is inside my Remarkable. So for my personal life, the things that I'm tracking for my coaching business and my health and my fitness, I just have um, something that uh, Kelsey created for me inside Canva. I loaded it onto my Remarkable. So if you have an iPad and you're more of a digital person, you can absolutely use your Remarkable. You can use your iPad or you can print it. I don't have one in front of me, but my, my great friend, Treasure Davis, she showed us years ago their accountability books. And that's something that we do use on the team even to this day is we print out a quarterly um, accountability book that basically has a weekly tracker or a daily tracker. Mark Patterson has a phenomenal 100 point system that he has shared with us too. So I'm sure if you reach out to him, I know I have a copy of it somewhere, but he's got a great tracker that he uses. The whole point is, as someone said, it's accountability, right? It's that moment that you're stepping on the scale. Did the choices I make eating in the past week, you know, uh, help me lose the weight that I'm looking to, or am I, you know, am I not going to? To as you guys know, if you follow me on social media, today is my son's birthday, and here at the Jenks household, every birthday morning, my husband goes to the store and he buys all the naughty treats that that child loves. Usually consists of pickles and takis. It's very eclectic over here, um, and donuts and soda and you know different things like that. And what's great about that is I texted my coach this morning. I said, "Don't worry, I'm not eating any of this because I knew <laughs> that it's not in alignment with my goals." <laughs> um, that's it. I, I digress. So. Um, Yes, we'll go ahead and make sure that you get the you get access to the sheet. So here's an example coming out of a program called Sisu. So I just took a screenshot. So uh, S I S U is a program. Now, here's my thing with Sisu. It's phenomenal, and it's very expensive. The bo the the benefits of using a program like Sisu is it integrates with almost all the CRMs in some way, shape, or form. So you don't have to do a manual entry. If you're making your calls and you're logging your calls in your CRM, as you should, it'll pull that data. You can use it for transaction management. You can do it for a lot of things. My beef with it, if they ever see this, yikes. My beef with it is that it can, it can give you some inaccurate data depending on how you have it set up. Their customer service has been pretty great. As a coach, um, I coach a lot of clients that use it. I will say it's a great product. It has some hiccups. Sometimes I felt like I was paying for a premier product that was really in beta, but over the years, they, they've done a great job. I did use it personally in my business for almost three years. So here's a screenshot from there, and it's very simple. You can see that the blue is not on pace, um, that yellowy color is on pace, and the reddish color is goal achieved. This is an example of the dashboard. We can see closed volume, closed units, forecasted volume, forecasted units, under contract volume, and then of course, really clear buyer sign, buyers under contract, buyers closed. So a very simple example of how to be able to look at a scorecard to know if you're winning or not. Oops, going the wrong way. Um, here's another example of how they um, can track additional pieces in Sisu. So live listings, pending units, average price point, average listing. So this is you know, something you could definitely look at. I don't have a code or anything for it. I'm not getting paid. It's just a great product. It is a little bit pricey. Um, I mentioned that, so if you have a team or if you are using your CRM, this is an example of how it looks like with Boomtown, but I know it works with Follow-Up Boss, it works with CR Interactive, it works with, um, I believe, all of the CRMs out there. You can track your appointments, your conversations, your dials. It's pretty simple and it's pretty easy to use to create a scorecard. Here's an example of just one of the pages out of CTE. So CTE, um, also known as Committed to Excellence, it is basically the most impressive spreadsheet you've ever seen. <laughs> and it's pretty inexpensive, less than $35 a month. And um, that's what I'm, I've used in my business before I went to CSU. And then when I came back from CSU, I went back to CTE. I love the price and how much data I'm able to capture and really harness 
what I'm doing in my business. If you have a team, you can also pay an additional $75 a year, not month, a year, and have a team platform so each of your team members can see their own personal scorecard and how they're performing against their goals. We like to use that, that team member scorecard inside of our one-on-ones, and so they like to look at it so they know, hey, am I on pace or not? So here's an example of just looking at the lead measures against the lag measures. So at the top, we have the lag measures. Um, across here. So the units, GCI, their cost of sales, their expenses are not listed in here, and their net profit at the time that I took this screenshot. You can see they're not tracking their hours of lead generation, their hours of power, their contacts, or their contact to appointment ratio. It is something that can be tracked in CTE. In this particular example, this client is not doing that. But we can see they are tracking their listing appointment set, their listing appointments held, and then how many listings they're taking. So again, these are all lead measures. That's pretty cool. The lag measure would be closed listings. You can also look down here and we've got the same thing for buyers. Appointments set, appointments held, actual buyers taken, and then of course what they're pending. Their pending is also going to be a lead measure to the lag measure. I know, super technical, but this is just one of the pages that they use. At the bottom of this page, I took a secondary screenshot. It lets you know that closed piece and it rolls it up into the quarter. So all the way to the right, you can see this was a screenshot from a quarter one, how many listings they closed, how many buyers they closed, and what was their total closed volume and GCI. And then of course, those average price points. It also breaks down their cost of sales. So if you're on a team and you're paying out commission splits, it breaks all of this out. This is where I said, like, again, I love this product. Until you're familiar with it, you might need a simplified version, which is just that simple Excel sheet. This is an example um, from a team. I took the names out so you can't see. This is a scoreboard of agent activity. So on this team, they were tracking contacts, appointments set, appointments held, and offers written. And each one of those lines represents one of the team members. So from that competitive nature, this would be something that would be displayed up in the office, or maybe you take a screenshot and post it through Slack. Super helpful to drive traffic. Here's an example of an agent activity. So we can see up at the top the lag measures with their pipeline active, pending, closed. At the time of this one, this agent had nothing pending, but they had four closed, uh, two from Zillow, one from a lender referral, and one from a Sphere referral. So we can see there's a lot of really good information here. And, and we would also be able to see their conversations, appointments set, appointments met, and where they're at in relationship to their goal. So that's a lot of different examples on scorecards. You don't have to spend any money. You can just use Excel or Google Sheets to just keep it simple. And that might be where you wanna start. If you already have a lot of tech in place, then yes, you could probably look at some of these other platforms. And, and um, the biggest thing is, what are you going to put in your scorecard? And then once you have your scorecard, here's how we wrap it all up. You need to create a cadence of accountability. You need to establish a regular rhythm of which you meet to go over those, uh, to go over what's on your scorecard or your scoreboard. The weekly accountability meeting should be super focused and productive and action oriented, okay? The ultimate goal is to ensure that the team or yourself is staying on track towards achieving the goal. So if you have a team structure, one of the things that I'd recommend is don't talk about deals, don't talk about drama, like this is a very, very focused meeting where you're just going to be going over the scorecard and then your your issues that come up. Like why? In fact, I think that's my next slide. Yes, super easy to read. But I put it in the slide so that you guys can go back and you can read this and save yourself some time. So you want to review the progress. So each week, same time, same bat, you know, same bat time, same bat place. <laughs> the weekly meeting should not be all over the place. It should be at the same time, same place, same expectations. We already know what's expected to come to the meeting. Everybody comes to the meeting with homework because the homework is designed at the meeting. So you're going to discuss the lead measures. Are we on track? And if we're not on track, what were the obstacles? How can we clear the obstacles to make sure? What do we want to tweak, right? Everybody at the meeting is going to commit so who would attend the meeting? Probably your operations manager, your marketing manager, your sales manager, your team leader. And if it's just you, you attend, right? <laughs> and then I would recommend that you get an accountability partner and you share it with your accountability partner, right? Like if this is that step on the scale, record it, share it type of thing. Um, if So if it's just you, then find somebody to do this with so that you have that extra layer. I know I talk a lot about, you, you know, mine and Merrill's fitness journey and health 
you know, that we've been really focused on. And my husband's lost over 200 pounds. And one of the ways that he does that is that he tracks all of his food inside of my fitness pal. And I do as well. He was a great influence on me for that. And I will tell you that you eat differently when you know you have to track it. And then we share that with our health coach. So my health coach knows if I'm going to eat a Snickers or a donut or something like that. Like she will be able to see that. This is the same for you. So if you didn't go on any appointments last week and you didn't have any conversations, and if you're the only person that sees it, it might not have the impact. But if you share it with someone else, you might be like, dang. I probably should make some calls before I fill out this tracker and send it to my accountability partner or my coach. You will act differently when you have more public accountability. So the other thing is you want to commit to any actions that you're gonna make, assignments. So everybody leaves with an assignment. We all take extreme ownership. In fact, it's one of our core values at the Big Helper Group is extreme ownership. So when we leave that meeting, we know we're coming back having done something. Nobody comes to the meeting not doing something and in a team environment if you show up and the other three people did their work and you didn't it becomes painfully obvious right you will not show up twice to that meeting without having done your homework it forces you to create ceo time in your schedule right a lot of us are busy working in the business right like just all crazy whirlwind in fact that's what they call it in 40x is the whirlwind and we need to take time to schedule that ceo time The CEO time is a lot of time what we're working on for the WIG meeting. We're prepping for the WIG meeting. We're we're doing everything that we need to do to get our homework done before we go to that meeting. So that weekly meeting is super important. And we're wrapping up. So right now, go ahead and write any questions that you have inside the face, you know, inside the chat. We'll make sure to get you guys copies of the individual agent scorecard, the big scorecard. You can use that as an individual agent as well. You definitely want to customize it towards your business, towards your lead pillars. And then I am on a mission to get to 50 reviews. So if you find this valuable at all, I would greatly appreciate it if you went to Jinx Coaching, Speaking, and Realtors and left a review for us because um, I love doing this and I want to be able to reach more people. So this would be a huge favor to me. You can scan the QR code or you can just Google Jinx Coaching, speaking, uh, Speakers, and Realtors to find our Google business page. So um, do we have any questions about how to create a scorecard? how to how to do our goals or anything like that if so i'll take a couple minutes to go ahead and answer that right now um and if not then we'll jump off i appreciate you guys being with me on a friday i know this class was a little bit longer but here's what i know what you track and measure improves tracking is not always easy and i promise you it's worth it so take the time to figure out what numbers you're going to track how you're going to track it and then how you're going to get accountability around those numbers. If you have a coach, make a coach, you know, make a commit with your coach. I know Joanne has a coach. So you make a commit with your coach. If you don't have a coach and and you're on a team, talk to your team leader. If you're not on a team and you're by yourself, find someone who is as driven as you, right? Your friends are, I tell my kids all the time, your friends are like an elevator. They're either going to take you up or they're going to drag you down. So if you are by yourself, you're not on a team, you don't have a coach, Find a couple other agents who want to increase accountability, create these scorecards, and then share them with each other. So someone asked a question. um, How do you motivate your team to be excited about tracking? Do you have any tips or fun tricks? I will tell you, this is so hard. And I might even have some of my team members on here. But (laughs) I will tell you, the only way to get excited about tracking is when you start seeing results. So, and, and we've all experienced that. When when I first started tracking my macros with my health coach, I had so many excuses, you guys. It was like, oh, it's too hard. I, it takes so much time. It's not easy, right? Like I had every excuse in the world. But fast forward a year, I've, it's been a little over a year that I've been consistently tracking my food. It's just habit now. And I get really excited because I know that when I hit my calorie goal and I hit my protein goal and I hit my steps because my steps are tracked in my fitness pal or not my fitness pal in my um, Fitbit, right? When all that happens, I see the results that I'm looking for. So when it comes to tracking in your business, the best example I can give you is um, Chris Ulrich on the team here in, he lives in Gilbert and he's a phenomenal referral partner. If you guys are looking for a Gilbert referral partner, the Phoenix market really shifted in the end of second quarter of 2022. And at that time, Chris was focused heavily on Zillow Flex leads and they just like disappeared overnight. 
And we looked at his tracker and we saw the activities were not what they needed to be. So in our coaching session, he made a commitment. He was like, here's what I'm going to do. And he was really going to focus on open houses. And he started to track his numbers and the lead measures. Then he got excited. He adopted the scorecard and his scorecard was incredible because he even turned it into a pie graph. He did all sorts of fun things with it inside of Google, but he got excited as he started to see the results because he could see, wow, I had this many conversations and I had this many open houses. I got this many leads. And then it was, it was that 60, 90 day cycle. Cause you guys know everything we do today, we're not getting paid for today right? The, the prospecting we do today, we're going to get paid for in 60 to 90 days. He saw that. And since then he's been hooked and he, you know, I, we probably, I probably should have had him come on and, and do a testimonial, but that's how he got excited. The excitement comes when you see the results. So as a team leader, yes, you just got to get them to do it, but then celebrate with them when you see the trends. Hey, look at that. Every 10 conversations you have, you set an appointment. Wow, every 110 conversations you have, you close a deal. Imagine that. Now, you know, now you know every 110, you just got a new deal. So reinforce the positive behavior. Sometimes we run contests and sometimes we punish. So there's that, you know, that that positive side and there's that negative side. Um, you're basically off leads if you don't track your numbers. Nobody, nobody naturally, it's maybe analytical people, but even the analytical people that I've coached and that I've I've had on the team even they struggle with numbers tracking. So it can be done, reinforce the, the, what you see and use it as a coaching opportunity. And then, um, like I said, we just have a standard on the team. If you don't track your numbers, you're off leads. And that's because we really need to be able to see how to help you. I can't diagnose your issues if I don't know what activities you've been doing and we don't even know what your numbers are. So that was a great question. Well, everybody, thank you so much. If you guys have anything else, just hit me up on social media, DM me, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Go out, sell some homes, have some conversations, help some people real, you know, realize their real estate dreams, and let's just keep our mindset positive. There's a lot of business out there. We just have to go and find it. Thanks, everybody.